All right, let's talk about Tyron Matthews' visit with the Saints. Terrell Owens wanting to play for the Chiefs. Stephon Diggs' huge contract extension and much more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs and the NFL overall. So make sure to sub if you're new around here. Hit that like button. If you don't like this video, hit it twice and let's get into it. Let's start off with this. Yesterday, the Chiefs shared a graphic on Twitter about Mahomes that said, one of three players to register three seasons of at least 4,700 passing yards and 35 passing TDs. The only other players in NFL history to throw for 4,700 plus yards and 35 plus TDs three or more times are Drew Brees and Tom Brady, who each have done it four times. Mahomes has done this three times in four years as a starter, and that is absolutely unbelievable, yet here we are. We have to believe it because it happened. And then, Tyron Matthew recently visited with the Saints, but downplayed his chances of actually signing with New Orleans. He said this, quote, I have a great relationship with Cam Jordan, Marshawn Lattimore, and the list goes on and on. Anytime I see the Saints play defense, I always tap myself on the shoulder and say, hey, I could probably roll with these guys. Those guys have done a great thing. The last couple of years, they've been like top five in defense. I don't really think they need me, but it would be good to go back home and help them win. He goes on to say, this is my third time in free agency, unfortunately, but this time around, it's not about being the highest paid safety. It's not about breaking news or anything like that. I just want my family to be comfortable. I think I've worked hard enough and long enough in this league to be able to have that. I want to play for a team that has a chance to win a championship, but outside of that, I want my kids and my family to be happy and to be safe. If it's truly not about the money, signing in New Orleans could certainly make sense for Matthew and his family, but could also make sense for him to play somewhere else. Maybe last night, Frank Clark called the Tyron Matthew on his Instagram stories to run one more back with the Chiefs saying, one more run, five, I need my dog, and tagged Tyron Matthew. I mean, to be honest, I am here for it. Let's say Tyron doesn't get an offer he wants in free agency and comes back on a more affordable deal for a couple years. Let's go. Will it happen? Probably not, but would it be amazing, at least in my opinion? Yes, it would. And then the Chiefs have recently either scheduled or had top 30 visits or private workouts with several players, including wide receiver George Pickens, safety Nasir Greer, cornerback Jaquan McMillian, running back Shamari Jones, tight end Lucas Kroll, linebacker James Houston IV, and defensive tackle Devontae Wyatt. I may dive into some of these guys in more detail on a later video, but for now, I've linked the full article from Chiefs Wire down below if you want to see more details on these individuals. All right, we got to talk about Terrell Owens because he was recently on the Pat McAfee show and he said this. I talked extensively, you know, time to time with Andy Reid, who uh, who coached me when I was in Philly. Um, I, I I was, you know, I was blowing his phone up throughout the course of the year. I'm like, dude, bring me in, bring me in. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? You got to bring me in, Andy. All the guys in that room laugh because, well, Terrell Owens is 48 years old. They're all like, yeah, man, you're hilarious, but... I think he was dead serious because he goes on to say this. Uh, but again, I, they, they brought Josh Gordon in and he didn't do anything. And I'm like, I can do what Josh Gordon, Josh Gordon was doing, which, I mean, he didn't amount to anything really. You look at the last game that they played. Um, I think it was against the Bengals in third down red zone situation. Patrick Mahomes, he couldn't find anybody in the red zone. You insert me into that offense. That's where I just said I would be valuable. You put me on the other side of that formation. Somebody has to commit to one side or the other. Because like, at the end of the day, I'm going to get open. I'm going to be a viable option. Again, this guy's not joking. He's like, you brought in Josh Gordon, but he didn't do anything production-wise, so you could have brought me in and potentially seen more production than that. He didn't even say potentially. He said, I could have done more than that. So, yeah, very interesting. Don't get me wrong. Terrell Owens is a freak of nature. He's still very fit, in shape, and the video clips that you're seeing of him right now, of him working out and running routes, was just last year year but still the josh gordon experiment in my opinion at least cannot be fully decided upon until he gets a full offseason with the chiefs 
first. So we will know more in the following months and earlier on into the season if he makes the active roster. But dude, Josh Gordon is 30. Owens is 48. For context, I'm 31 in like a week, okay? And my mom is 48. She had me at 17 and my dad is 49. He was 18. So yeah, Terrell Owens seems confused why they'd bring in Josh Gordon, but not him. But could it be? <laughs> because there's almost a 19 year age difference. That's crazy. He could be his father. Anyway, this news is a bit less crazy. Coach Dick Vermeil was recently selected for the 2022 Pro Football Hall of Fame back in February and will be inducted into the Hall of Fame alongside a number of other legends in Canton, Ohio on Saturday, August 6th. Well, he announced that his presenter is going to be former Chiefs president and GM Carl Peterson. They actually worked together in the early 1970s at UCLA, where Peterson was an assistant coach and Vermeil took the head coaching job. From there, Vermeil went to Philadelphia, but actually brought Carl with him. Peterson eventually elevated through the ranks to personnel director and assistant GM, and later, as we know, went to KC for 20 years as their president and GM. Then, during that time, he hired Vermeil to come back into coaching with the Chiefs for five years. And Vermeil had this to say about Carl Peterson. Carl's part of our family, a great man, a great administrator, a great football guy, and I'm really honored to have him present me. So, that's pretty cool to see how far back together they both really go and to see that he chose Peterson to present this out of all the guys he could have chosen. And speaking of choosing, the Chiefs recently released an article looking back at every seventh round draft pick chosen in Chiefs history. Over the next three weeks leading up to the draft, they're going to continue releasing articles like this looking at one round at a time. This year, as of right now, the Chiefs have four seventh round picks, but the last seventh rounder they ever selected was Bo Pete Keys in 2020, so none in 2021. And a couple notable seventh round pick selections to me over the Chiefs history was Danon Hughes in 1993. He's the current Chiefs radio network analyst. We attend the same church and I actually work with his daughter. Another one would be Ryan Suckup in 2009 and recent addition Nick Allegretti in 2019 or a couple others that stood out to me. The end of this article is pretty cool as it lists some interesting notes. Here's two that stood out to me. 29 of KC's 58 seventh round draft picks went on to appear in a game for the Chiefs combining to play in a 1,084 total contest. And the second one was offensive linemen and defensive back have been the most selected positions over the years with 11 picks each. And a link to the full article is in the description below if you want to check it out in more detail. And then Grant Tuttle of Arrowhead Attic dropped an article yesterday titled Eight Players Worth Trading Up For in the NFL Draft. And here's the eight players he mentions. Edge rushers Kayvon Thibodeau and Jermaine Johnson, defensive tackle Jordan Davis, cornerback Sauce Gardner and Derek Stingley Jr., wide receivers Jamison Williams, Drake London, and Chris Olave. Basically, he's saying if any of these guys make it out of the top 10, the Chiefs could, in theory, trade up for them, but at a pretty hefty cost. That could mean potentially both of our first round picks and maybe a third or a fourth or maybe even a second round pick to get up high enough. Some of these guys we know may very well not make it out of the top 10, and I'm not sure the Chiefs would even be able to trade up that far anyway or feel like the pros outweigh the cons as far as giving up that many draft picks. I mean, I feel like we could basically rule out the cornerbacks as much as I love Sauce Gardner. I just don't see how in the world the Chiefs would give up that much draft capital to go after a cornerback, a position that Veach and company has repeatedly shown not to invest a ton of money or capital in. As far as wide receivers, the edges, and defensive tackle Jordan Davis, my question to you all is this. Do you think if any of these players make it out of the top 10, and depending on the player, maybe start creeping into the later teens, that the Chiefs would make a move to go up and grab them? If so, who do you think it could be? Or are you of the opinion that the Chiefs should not trade up at all and grab the best remaining players in round 29 and 30, their first round picks, and I believe it's 50, their second round pick. And we can't forget this either. The Chiefs could trade away a pick or two or three for a big splash type trade here before the draft even happens. It's not like they've been shy about trading draft picks for players in the past, so that is also a very real scenario. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. There's a lot of possibilities 
and things that could play out depending on moves made before the draft. And I've seen a lot of varying opinions from different analysts, different Kansas City sports coverage channels like RGR, KCSN, and Arrowhead Addict, and also from y'all in the comment sections. And yeah, it's pretty nuts. Part of me hopes the Chiefs go into the draft this year and use a bunch of these draft picks to simply get better, younger, faster, and add more depth. But another part of me thinks, well, why the heck not trade up and grab someone that can make an instant impact for us? on defense specifically, and let's get rolling. This is part of the reason why yesterday I gave our offseason move so far a B minus. Uh, we haven't really answered much on the defensive side of the ball this offseason for the defense, specifically the D line. I mean, I think it's safe to say that Justin Reed is our answer for Tyron Matthew, but now Ward is gone cornerbacks a definite need for depth there as well and yeah as far as d-line goes we did restructure frank clark we brought back naughty we recently signed taylor stallworth for a rotational piece and we do have some other rotational players and also we have the man himself chris jones but does that make our d-line any better than last year no and ingram isn't confirmed back yet either and even if he was our d-line was not the greatest last year we need upgrades so yeah there's certainly a lot to think about and consider there that's for sure in other nfl news the falcons announced the signing of former bears lineman jermaine efidi to a one-year deal as well as former titans linebacker rashawn evans the ravens retained defensive back geno stone as an exclusive rights free agent the bucks signed former cowboys linebacker keanu reeves just kidding keanu neal but is expected to return to the safety position while playing for the Bucks. And the Bucks also re-signed QB Blaine Gilbert, who has spent the past two seasons as Tom Brady's backup. The Dolphins signed cornerback Xavier Howard to a contract extension through the 2026 season. Howard has twice led the NFL in INTs and has totaled 27 career picks since the Dolphins selected him in the second round of the 2016 NFL Draft. And then linebacker Whitney Merciless announced his retirement from the NFL yesterday via his Instagram. He was a first round pick by the Texans in 2012 and amassed 58 sacks during his 10 year career. And then this is interesting to note, edge rusher is viewed as the second highest paid position in football behind quarterback, but wide receiver is coming for that title, coming to take the crown. Edge rushers making 20 million plus per year, six in total wide receivers making 20 million plus per year nine edges with 50 million plus guaranteed seven of them receivers with 50 million plus guaranteed eight of them that's pretty wild to me and on the subject of receivers making a boat load of cash stefan diggs and the buffalo bills agreed to terms on a four-year 96 million dollar contract extension that can be worth more in incentives. Diggs will receive a 21.5 million dollar signing bonus and 70 million in total guarantees. That's a big guarantee. The deal puts the 28 year old Diggs under contract in Buffalo for the next six seasons. It's a worthy payday for one of the top receivers in the NFL and Josh Allen's go to target. Diggs has recorded at least a thousand yards in the past four seasons. And after joining Buffalo two years ago, Diggs led the NFL in receiving in 2020 with 127 catches for 1,535 yards. And in 2021, he netted 1,225 yards on 103 catches. So there we go. Big money for digs after deals like Devonte adams tyree kill and others continue to impact the wide receiver market what are your thoughts on this you happy for digs what are your thoughts on other things that i mentioned in this video anything that surprised you anything you want to mention let me know in the comments down below and if you made it this far into the video definitely comment your favorite chiefs player of all time or if you're not a chiefs fan your favorite nfl player of all time mine is definitely going to be Derek Thomas, although I'm also a huge Gonzalez and Kelsey fan. It's tough to choose, honestly. And I want to say thanks to those of you who commented your favorite movies yesterday. There's some I definitely want to check out that many of you mentioned. Anyway, make sure to sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here from the previous day's news in case you missed it. So until next time, let's go. Let's go. How about those? <laughs>